Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown of the new trailer for She-Hulk on Disney+, Plus, starring Tatiana Maslany as Jennifer Walters, attorney at law, cousin to Bruce Banner, and uh, someone for whom my admiration, I swear to you, remains a wholesome professional respect. Anyone complaining about the CGI? We just may be better off in the Uncanny Valley right now, because uh, if this looked too lifelike, major portions of the productivity in America would have come to a screeching halt when this trailer dropped. From the return of Tim Roth as Emil Blonsky Abomination to Frog Man sightings, and precisely why the CGI might be a little off in some spots, I'm gonna break down this trailer frame by frame for the details that you missed. Let's go. Being a superhero is a trial by fire. Who's gonna protect the world if not people like you? So we open on the LA skyline, already a bit of a change of the pace for the MCU, which hasn't really been in the modern day LA area since Iron Man 3. We hear the voice of Bruce Banner giving the hero talk to his cousin Jennifer as a fancy event comes under siege. This actually looks like the event that Jen later in this trailer attends in her nice dress. And now outside, we see these armored soldiers carrying these interesting looking weapons. These actually look like a smaller handheld version of the sonic cannons that General Ross used on Hulk in the 2008 film, which according to that movie's opening credits actually came from a stark industry's design. These showed up later equipped on the Stark drones in Spider-Man Far From Home, and War Machine's suit had a version of this in Civil War. In this case, it looks like a defensive measure used against Hulk-powered threats, maybe She-Hulk or Titania. Then we see this gang carrying some interesting weapons, crowbars, hooks, a crossbow. What kind of threat are they facing if not a supernatural one, like vampires or werewolves? There's an eccentric mix of tones in this trailer, perhaps reflecting this series format as a nine-episode, half-hour legal comedy, with Jen taking on a new case of the week, each week, which all could showcase a different aspect of the Marvel world. Vampires specifically have come up more and more, like in Loki and Eternals. Eternals, of course, introduced Blade in its post credit scene. We saw a crossbow in the Sanctum Undercroft in Spider-Man No Way Home. This October is going to be Werewolf by Night Halloween special. She-Hulk just seems like a very apt place to introduce these different things. This gang may also be the wrecking crew from the comics, also known for wielding crowbars, or they could just be another group of guys carrying weird shit. Then we see a car wreck, which might be part of the inciting incident of Jen's transformation. Now in the comics, Jennifer Walters as a prosecutor cracking down on organized crime ends up getting targeted by the mafia and shot, leaving to her cousin Bruce having to give her a transfusion. And that blood is how she ends up getting her Hulk powers. However, later in this trailer, Jen appears outside that car looking at the dark reflection in the dented car door and she already begins to transform. So maybe she got a transfusion before this or it may just be innate to her family DNA, perhaps activated by that shockwave of gamma radiation when Hulk snapped everyone back in Endgame, which is something that Hulk indicated. The radiation's mostly gamma. It's like, uh, I was made for this. So the uniqueness of Banner's blood that initially reacted to the gamma radiation in a specific way to turn him into Hulk may be the same unique DNA trait that is also in Jen's blood. And now that everyone on Earth has been hit with gamma radiation, it just caused her to react this specific way. We get a quick shot of Jen's hulked out physique and athletic gear. We saw this in the November teaser. Again, I just love how she's wearing the white, purple, and black color scheme as she does in her longtime clothes in the comics. Moving on. I'm Jennifer Walters. I'm a lawyer. I have great friends. Can we get some shots, please? It's an emergency. A uh, demanding job. We just started a superhuman law division, and I want you to be the face of it. Okay, the Marvel Studios title card turns a bright shade of green, and it starts from a little green flare of light from beneath Marvel, suggesting that, yeah, it might be a burst of gamma radiation that was the cause of Jen's transformation. Jen introduces us to her world, as she hangs out with her friend Nikki, played by Ginger Gonzaga. They have open wine bottles all over the house, and the wine bottle to her right is the Velvet Devil label. Stop putting devil fake outs in all your trailers, Marvel! You're just making them angry! Hamilton's Renee Elise Goldberry plays Amelia, I'm assuming a legal colleague of Jennifer's in her office is an hourglass because she's obviously a TVA agent. Uh, please click away. If I don't at least mention these things, he punishes me. But it's worth noting that in the comics, She-Hulk represents a variety of clients working one case in front of the TVA and another time representing Eros in a sexual assault case. Uh, probably not gonna be in the MCU. Josh Sagara plays another employee at this firm. And you can see on the screen, it shows GLK slash H in the same design as the November title card for this series that thankfully now has been updated 
because I like this new title way better. GLKH stands for Goodman, Lieber, Kurtzberg, and Holloway, which is the name of Jen's law firm in the 2004 run of the comics by Dan Slott. Now, the name Goodman was a reference to Marvel publisher Martin Goodman, Lieber a reference to Stan Lee's actual last name, Stanley Martin Lieber, and Kurtzberg a reference to Jack Kirby's legal last name, Kurtzberg. In the comics, these three partners are never shown, which is why their three letters are grouped together. Holloway is the only partner who Jen deals with. When Jen and Nikki get shots, Jen's clothes are actually She-Hulk's color scheme once again. Black blazer, white shirt, green pants, and purple light on her shirt. Then we see this awesome new maximum security facility located in the middle of the desert with high perimeter walls and an energy field fence on the drive-in. This interesting architecture makes me wonder if this could be the MCU version of the Cube. Originally a shield black site in the Nevada desert designed to contain gamma irradiated inmates and also became the home base of the Thunderbolts. The patches on the guards show a sigil of an eagle carrying arrows that looks a lot like the US Department of Justice, but this isn't the DODC, that is a different logo, whereas SWORD was overseen by Hayward, and now perhaps either Monica Rambeau or Abigail Brand, maybe Nick Fury, the Raft Prison was overseen by Secretary of State Thaddeus Ross, RIP William Hurt, this agency may be under the supervision of Val, someone we know was involved in some shadowy government agency, and you could totally imagine Julia Louis-Dreyfus showing up in the series. Uh, back at the firm, Jen's supervisor is Holloway, that being the same Holloway partner of this firm name, and it sounds like they're now branching out to handle cases pertaining to superheroes. The same kind of legal work provided by Matt Murdock in Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, while I imagine Matt Murdock would stick to the New York area, it's really only a matter of time before these two Marvel lawyers cross paths. So hopefully Charlie Cox shows up on the show. That'd be awesome. Now, Holloway specifically wants Jen to be the face of the superhero law division, suggesting that this may come about after her tendency to Hulk out emerges. It looks like one of her clients is Emil Blonsky, aka Abomination, Tim Roth, returning from the 2008 Hulk film. Now remember, Abomination ended that film getting KO'd by Hulk in the Battle of Harlem, and was actually later the planned recruit by S.H.I.E.L.D. for one of the Avengers, until we saw in that Marvel one-shot, Coulson and Selvig used Tony Stark to talk Ross into recruiting Bruce Banner instead. Blonsky was name-dropped in an episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., apparently kept in a cold storage facility in Alaska, and of course we last saw Abomination in Shang-Chi, sparring with Wong in the Golden Daggers Club of Macau. Actually, when Wong opened that portal to take Abomination back, the background room showed that this is the same room that he is now in in She-Hulk. Now, Wong is confirmed to appear in this series as well, so we'll likely get some answers to why Wong was partnered with Abomination in that movie. Was Wong sneaking him out, or was this approved by the government? I'm wondering if these furloughs were actually part of a deal to train up Abomination as a government soldier as part of Val's Dark Avengers crew, maybe alongside Yelena Belova and John Walker. Maybe Blonsky now wants out of that deal, and that's why he is now lawyering up. Either way, I hope we get some kind of rematch between Hulk and Abomination in this series. I mean, they're both there. Let's see the fight. Let them fight. Moving on. And a frustrating family. Cause we didn't ask for this, but you still gotta deal with it. Okay, Jennifer visits Bruce in his new home on this tropical coastline. Not sure where exactly this is, but later She-Hulk wears a shirt reading I Heart Mexico. So this may be along the Mexican coastline, like the Yucatan. Maybe one of the places Banner stopped during his journey from Brazil to the US in the 2008 film. Let's not forget all of that happened in the MCU, even though it feels like so long ago. Bruce pulls out a binder, probably containing his research that he conducted over that 18 months in the Gamma Lab that he mentioned in Endgame, when he found some mysterious cure to reach his current balance and control over his Hulk abilities. And he says, you didn't ask for this. So it really does sound like the series might be suggesting Jen's Hulk powers could start with a unique quality to their family DNA, which is only now activated by a recent burst of gamma radiation. Now notice how the shots here are taken from two different scenes, one where Hulk is wearing a zip-up hoodie, another where he's wearing this t-shirt. Amazing that he found one that fits him. It's got an interesting logo. At first I thought this could be related to S.H.I.E.L.D., but the bolts emanating out of it make me wonder if this could actually be a logo that he made for himself in his gamma radiation, like his new Hulk logo. Now folks, inflation is hitting us all hard right now, and that's a great reason to start using Upside, an incredible app for everyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. So all of us pretty much. With every purchase, you can earn cash back thanks to Upside. So whenever I need to fill up my tank, I open up the Upside app, I search for a nearby gas station offering a good deal, I claim it, and then I head over to that location and buy gas. I can check in or snap a pic of the receipt, and then I'm good to go. No special cards to 
to carry or numbers to remember. You can earn three times more cash back than with credit card rewards or loyalty programs. You can cash out any time to your bank account, PayPal, or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Upside users are earning more than a million dollars every week, and it has a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. So to get started, download the free Upside app in the App Store or Google Play. Use the promo code NEWROCKSTARS to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. And thanks again to Upside for sponsoring this video, an app for which there is only an Upside. Now, the second scene looks like it is part of a meditation session. Like he's like saying, relax, breathe. Hulk could be teaching her how to relax and center herself. Meditation, remember, was a huge part of Bruce's regimen in the 2008 film. Now, we still do not know exactly why Bruce was shown in human form with his arm in a sling in that Shang-Chi post credit scene, especially now that he's back in Hulk form with his arm completely healed. Kevin Feige told Screen Rant that that sling was intentional, and I have theorized that maybe Hulk depowered a human form to allow himself to give a life-saving transfusion to Jen, but the IMAX aspect ratio of that Shang-Chi post credit scene showed Banner was also on his other arm wearing a piece of wrist tech with a glowing green piece to it, which now, after Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness has come out, kind of reminds us of those 838 cufflinks that were powered by the green sands of Nasanti, those sands depowering the wearer for a certain amount of time. Maybe Wong gave Banner that cuff to depower him so that they could temporarily heal his arm when he was in human form. Because as Hulk, his flesh is otherwise so impenetrable, they couldn't really do anything to him. Let's move on. Your transformations are triggered by anger and fear. Those are like the baseline of any woman just existing. Oh. Bruce, it feels like if I don't transform, I'm gonna die. Yes, yes, yes. No, no. Okay, down in the Gamma Lab, again, I think this is the one Hulk spent the 18 months in, Banner deliberately provokes Jen's anger with this torture device. Their swim gear indicates that this lab is underground, their tropical Mexican home. Now, whereas in the November teaser, the screens beside Banner showed Jen's face, here it shows an X-ray of her brain with the limbic system highlighted. The limbic system is the inner part of the brain that controls emotion. As Banner now says, the Hulk abilities are activated by anger and fear. We flash back to Jen's car accident transformation, and while she can't exactly see a reflection fully, the car paint is green, which masks her own skin color change. And yeah, we see how this chamber is a total death pod, razors spinning. And if you look closely at those razors, when she breaks them especially, you can see they are Stark Industries brand. So this means Tony Stark may have helped Banner set up this Gamma Lab during those 18 months, working alongside him as a lab partner to help him reach this wonderful Smart Hulk state. Isn't that great? And after these razors successfully trigger the fear to activate her She-Hulk form, Banner gives these thumbs up, looking just as he did to encourage the Avengers during their quantum experiment in Endgame. And this experiment is about as much of an absolute win. Next clip. I just want to be a normal, anonymous lawyer. Can you tell us where She-Hulk is? Jen, you're a story now. Girl, your ass looks crazy right now. Okay, we see Jen in what looks like her childhood bedroom. There's a play poster for Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream, which is a play all about physical transformation and the sexual arousal that arrives with it. I assume Jen might relocate here after getting some unwanted media attention due to her condition. Then we see Jen in her She-Hulk form trying to go about her work routine, but finds herself just getting stared at. Even that receptionist snaps a photo. Using the flash with all this great natural lighting? Come on! Now, there's been a lot of chatter about the unfinished CGI on She-Hulk and her face in this trailer. I think it was bound to happen. It, it honestly doesn't bother me as much as it does some of you. It really only strikes me in this one shot of Jennifer looking at her phone, and it's not so much the animation, it's really just the timing and the movement. Notice how her eyes are slightly out of sync with her body as it moves. Like, I get it, they're trying to animate this gesture of uh, Jen reacting to something on her phone, and then her eyes gesture to the side, like, what do I do? But they dart as her body is still straightening up, which just feels a little weirdly unnatural. Like, if you were animated in a cartoon, you would do one move after the other. You'd have the back straighten, and then the eyes dart to the side. And due to the uncanny valley effect that is encoded in our brains, our minds just weirdly accept more cartoony blocks as more naturalistic, which is why when you watch Pixar animation, they deliberately animate their characters to move more cartoony and slapsticky. Because we grew up watching cartoons, our brains just kind of accept that as natural. That's why they call it the uncanny valley. You have to go a little bit beyond what would be natural movement so that when we watch animated green characters, we just accept it. I, I see this as an absolute win. 
I will say, I really appreciate that they designed She-Hulk to have proportionately large hands, because remember, Hulk's fists are larger than a human's hands would be compared to the arms. But the problem is, you still just don't get a sense of the weight of the phone in her hands, the way that they showed the weight as Hulk pinched the tacos or, or clutched the sausage rolled in a pancake. Look, again, none of this is that big of a deal, I don't think. They are still rendering all these effects ahead of August, and I definitely don't think this is Sonic level bad. So let's just all chill out, okay? And ultimately, I just applaud this series for leaning into the tone of the character She-Hulk, and especially the overt sexuality of the character, something that the comics do not shy away from, as She-Hulk was really an intentionally campy satire of the way comics as a whole would over-sexualize female superheroes. She-Hulk was really the first female superhero to completely own it and make it a joke. This show definitely seems to be embracing that. Like the shot of all the gawkers at the garden party, the woman on the left is the funniest to me. Like, come on, eyes up here, lady. Next clip. You could be an Avenger. Oh, I'm not a superhero. That is for billionaires and narcissists and adult orphans for some reason. So Jen bursts out of her shoes as someone tries to attack her from behind, her growth lifting him off his feet. This attacker wears an interesting helmet that emits an energy glow. Not sure what this is, but it does remind me of the advanced hardware that Adrian Toomes' crew lifted from Chitauri Tech in Spider-Man Homecoming. Mickey encourages her to join the Avengers as we see She-Hulk and Hulk leaping beside each other on that island in a training montage. And while Hulk hits a superhero landing, I like how Jen does it. She just kind of lands in this less dignified squat with her elbows beneath her knees. Jen tells Nikki that the Avengers are for billionaires and narcissists and adults orphans, referring to, well, I guess Tony Stark, who was all of those things. But also, if you think about it, technically T'Challa might be the richest Avenger if you quantify the value of vibranium per ounce. And Peter Parker just lost the last of his parental guardians. He's kind of an adult orphan. Who exactly are you throwing shade at here, Jen? And really, anytime Tatiana Maslany says orphan, one cannot help but think of Orphan Black, the series where she showcased her amazing talent. Then Jen, barefoot and clothes torn, suggesting she was not prepared to Hulk out here, tears across a damaged courtroom toward a foe. The other shot reveals this is Titania Jamila Jamil, Mary McFerrin, She-Hulk's longtime nemesis in the comics. Now Titania gets powered up by alien technology and has powers that rival Jen's. It looks like she's smashed into this courtroom maybe to interrupt this trial, keep someone from testifying. Her outfit looks wild, something like a pro wrestler. But then there's a quick shot of this leaping dude. This is the fabulous Frogman, Eugene Patillo, one of the real goofball Marvel characters, son of the leapfrog, Vincent Patillo. Eugene takes on his dad's frog costume. He adds these spring coils so that it can leap six stories in the air. He's shown up with Spider-Man, the Human Torch, as well as the Avengers in various comics. I just want to give a huge congrats to longtime Frogman Stan, MT, for Frogman finally getting his MCU debut. I assume he will be another one of Jen's cases. We get a quick shot of Abomination hulking out in his containment cell, ripping out of his inmate jumpsuit. As in Shang-Chi, the character has been redesigned from the 2008 film to better match his comic appearance. He now has fins on the side of his head. And as he bumps his head, the red glow flashes over that container cell, meaning this cell may be equipped to shock him with pain whenever he tries to hulk out of it. Then on to the last clip. Is there anything more depressing than dating in your 30s? Yeah, this is the best date I've had in a while. Oh. Should we split some fries? Let's get those to go. So Jen swipes through a dating app on her phone, Matcher, and I like how she swipes right on everyone. And there's some great Easter eggs here, of course. Scott, dog lover, eight miles away. Grant, jump rope king, 12 miles away. Oh, you're trying to be clever there, Grant. Nick, DJ, 60 miles away. Noah, director, 24 miles away. Nice scarf, Noah. But my favorite is truck, local cutie, 32 miles away. Not exactly local. But this is actually a cameo by series creator Jessica Gao's partner, artist Truck Torrance, and their cat, Admiral Whiskers. Truck and the cat are wearing little captain's hats to salute the Admiral. So sweet of Jessica to get her local cutie in there. Now the other names she swipes through that we see from reverse are Bryce, Charles, Chris, Kevin, Feige, and Derek. And then we see a few of these dates, including one guy who flexes. This is actually WWE wrestler David Ortunga, but she ends the night with his other hunk, taking those fries to go. And we end with her carrying the beefcake back to her room as his foot knocks the lamp. Again, folks, a hard yes to more sex liberation, rock hard yes, because otherwise this MCU, until an eternal sex scene, was completely puritanical. We never got any sex in the MCU. Sex is a normal part of adult life. It's okay to have it. I'm super excited for the series to come to the MCU on August 17th. You can support New Rock Stars by checking out our merch options at NewRockStarsMerch.com. Comment down below with your thoughts on all this. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Boss. Follow New Rock Stars. Subscribe to New Rock Stars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>